Hello guys, what's up? Welcome to the uh, SketchUp Worker Studio. We have some new tutorial about the rendering. It's about the exterior rendering in Enscape at the night mode. So I'm going to start my job with the 3D model in here. This is one of the safe house projects in some place called Indonesia. And you can see all the climates, trees and vegetations are optimized and calibrated with the climates. So I done this project in the Indonesia and this is the one of the projects all the textures belong to the Enscape with the full displacement full reflection and other type of things so as you can see we have the daylight in here so I'm gonna start my job with the uh, view management I'm gonna press F on my keyboard and click on the ST number three and this is my main shot in here don't worry about the darkness in the screen we will improve it very soon and fast. First of all, I'm gonna increase my quality of the rendering to the medium rendering. It can help me to see the preview of my job much better. Or you can change it to the high quality. It depends on you and your job. So, I'm gonna click on the save frame in here. And now I have this type of resolution in this place. Now I'm gonna convert it to the two point perspective. And now I'm going to open the uh, visual setting in here. So I have the two point perspective in here. All the things are done now. For the first of all, one of the main important points about the night rendering related to the uh, atmosphere. When you click on the atmosphere, we have some option that's called night sky brightness. I want to maximize it as I can. It's some number about 300%. Or you can adjust it about some number 276. And after all of these jobs, now I will come back to the main bar in here and reduce my field of view with some number like that. All right, I want to focus on my house a little bit. I can orbit my camera something like this can be useful. All right, and now I'm going to focus on my house in here something like that and now i'm going to type 34 for my field of view i'm going to increase the depth of field change the focal point very simple and easy i want to focus on my facade so i'm going to focus on this thermal woods in here so i'm going to use 13.92 and when i increase the depth of field you can see the polarness in the environment so i'm going to reduce it in some DK number about 18 percent all right everything is good I can increase the exposure a little bit some number about 60 percent is good and now I'm going to click on the image bar in here but before we do this job I want to minimize my screen in this place I want to talk about what is the spotlight and IES light and how we can change it you can see this type of lights in here as you can see this is the simple spotlights that I created in the Enscape objects. When I click on the uh, Enscape object in here, I can load IES profiles. When I click on it, I can come to the download bar, compressed, and select one of these IES lights. It depends on you. You can change it by your own self. For example, IES number four, and open it. As you can see, it will add to your environment. Very simple and easy. At the first, you must create the spotlight. I've talked about it many times in the previous videos. So, I'm gonna change the uh, color of these lights. How I can change the color of the spotlight? Very simple. You can click on the paint bucket. You can click on the sample paint. And you can select these light in here. Now look at this please. When I increase the uh, light to some type of pink, you can see the changes in the render or something like the blue it depends on you but I prefer to use some warm colors near to the white color something like that and it's really wonderful you can change the uh, intensity of your spotlights in the facet with the luminous intensity I prefer to use 400 candela it depends on your project so all other type of lights you can see in the environment we create it as the same way and very simple and easy so 
I have some type of tips about the self-illumination. When I click on this material in here and click on the Inkscape Material Editor, I can found it in some place that called L1, as you can see. When I increase this light color, for example, I want to increase it, increase it, in some number about, for example, 3000. You can see the differences in your rendering and camera. For example, this blurness, this flare, and other type of animation things, and it's not really realistic at all. So I prefer to use some numbers lower than 100. For example, some number about 56 can be really useful for us and can be make our screen much brighter. So I'm gonna close my window in here, and now I'm gonna change my camera to the two point perspective. Everything is good right now. I'm going to come back to the Enscape environment. I'm going to click on the visual setting and increase the rendering quality to the ultra. All right. After all of these jobs, I'm going to start with job with the image bar. It's called corrections. I want some more highlights on my render. So I'm going to increase the highlights and I want some shadows too. Saturation is really dangerous option because it can be destroy your images. How? When you increase it, you can see your render will completely exit from the uh, realistic view. So I'm going to reduce it to some number about 98 and don't touch it because it's really sensitive. The color temperature. If you want some warm render at the night, you can reduce your temperature. And if you increase it, it looks like that you render this type of house in the winter or atom so i'm going to decrease it in some number about 5400 kelvina and it's really useful for me motion blur is not really useful in this place i'm going to reduce the bloom option to the zero because i need sharp render and lens flare is not really useful at all so 26 is good if you want some brighter edges in this picture you must to reduce the magnet and I think some number about 14% is good. And chromatic abbreviation. It's really not useful in here. I'm going to convert it to the uh, zero. So I'm going to come back to the atmosphere. My night sky brightness is good. I'm going to reduce your shadow sharpness because at night we have some soft shadows. So 34% is really good number. We have artificial light brightness. All of the self-illuminated lights, spotlights, sphere lights, and other things is the artificial light. So when you increase it, all of them will totally increase. As you can see, it really affects on your render and it's really useful. So I suggest you always use it. I want to type 136 for it. Ambient brightness about the interior rendering. So I don't want to talk about it. I only reduce it about 36%. The wind is not effective on our render, so I'm going to convert it to the zero, and we have a sky option in here. Look at this sky in here. We have lots of stars, clouds, and other things. When I increase the Cyrus amount, I will see more clouds in here. So I want some clear sky. So I'm going to convert density, variety, and Cyrus amount to the uh, zero. So I'm going to type third and zero percent, zero percent for all of them. Control is not really important. What is the latitude and latitude? You think these two options only work for the clouds in the daylight? You think wrong. Because you can change the star's position with the uh, latitude and latitude. You can see the changes in my environment when I increase this parameter. Very simple and easy. But I can convert it to the default option. Output is good. And time for the uh, rendering. So I'm going to come back to the main bar in here. I think I can make my render a little bit artificial. So I'm going to close it. My camera position is fixed. Now I want to hold shift and right click and change my daytime. Something near to the morning. Something like the, uh, some render like this because I need some purple sky in here. So five. 34 can be good or 536 as you can see all of the things has been done for us now i want to render my image so 
I'm gonna save it in the desktop with the Enscape preferred file name and press save. As you can see, we took this type of renders in the Enscape, I think under than 10 minutes. It's really useful tutorial, so please save this tutorial if you like this tutorial. And now after these render, I want to talk about the uh, lighting in the Enscape. So, as you can see, it takes a little bit time and the result uh, would be wonderful because we can manage the Enscape highlights, contrast, and other type of things in here. So, I think it's done for me. I'm going to open this image in here. And this is the result that we have and it's really wonderful. So, please subscribe our YouTube channel if you like this video. Thanks for your watching, thanks for your support, and goodbye.